So uh, let's begin. Um, today's agenda uh, and presenters, we have uh, Dave Colantuni, who's the VP of Product Management, um, Video and Media Solutions for Avid. Uh, we have myself uh, from Product Marketing for Avid Storage, and we have Ed Harper, who's the Director of Product Management for Storage and Cloud. So we'd like to kick off today's session with a quick introduction from Dave. Okay, thanks, Kev. Um, and th thank you um, for joining today. I'm Dave Colantoni, Vice President of Product Management. I really appreciate you taking the time to learn a little bit more about some exciting Nexus storage um, information that we wanna share with you today. This is a brand new release of Avid Nexus and it really offers some exciting updates to our Nexus on-prem storage solutions. We're also introducing a brand new Avid virtual file system software um, solution for on-prem hybrid and cloud workflows, and also an innovative Nexus Flex subscription program for you. So we hope this, this um, session is informational and helpful to you to learn more about Nexus. Please feel free to um, answer questions, I'm um, sorry, ask questions a little bit early today here in Massachusetts. Um, and um, yeah, Kevin and Ed are available to help you out. Kev, take it back to you. Thank you, Dave, much appreciated. Um, so a couple of things that we just want to touch on today, the, the sort of agenda for uh, what we're going to cover today is new release news about Avid Nexus Pro, Pro Plus specifically, new Avid F series and the virtual file system, the Nexus virtual file system. And then Ed's going to cover um, and introduce the Avid Nexus Flexus subscription, which is, as Dave has just said, is entirely new. So before we get going, um, we'd just like to kind of just introduce you to the um, if you have any questions, how do you submit the questions? So at the bottom of the screen, um, you should see the Q&A icon. So please, if you have any questions going through the session, just submit them on the uh, Q&A. And um, we have a number of people um, from Avid on the call who will uh, endeavor to answer the questions. And our goal is to try and leave some time at the at the end of the presentation to, to try and fill out the questions that we haven't answered. So without further ado, let's get going. Um, so we all know that, you know, in the media and, uh, and entertainment, the storage uh, needs are changing quite rapidly. Uh, business consolidation in terms of technology uh, movements towards uh, new infrastructures, new investments, uh, new ways to invest away from CapEx to maybe OPEX. And this is kind of where subscription fits into it. Uh, the cloud is playing a really substantial role in terms of storage deployment in the industry now. Uh, we're having and seeing an increasing number of customers adopting cloud solutions. So as we look at virtualization, where does the Nexus file system play into uh, cloud, cloud storage services? Um, and building out this, this very intelligent infrastructure. It, it's not just about the hardware anymore. It really is about building a highly scalable, highly flexible architecture for storage that will enable you to deploy in a number of different ways. Um, and enable us to provide, you know, uh, storage services and storage capabilities that uh, um, will be new and will impact your bus business quite significantly. But I think, you know, at a, at a very high level, one of the most important things is whatever storage system is provided or whatever storage system that you uh, would like to adopt in your business, you want to make sure those assets are available for everybody, whether they're uh, inside your facility, inside your um, uh you know, wherever the storage is sourced, you know, we need to give access to remote users and remote collaborators. So this is growing and growing and growing now. And we're beginning to see, you know, storage solutions needing um, much more flexibility in, in the way that assets are, uh, uh, are viewed and edited, again, whether it's on premises or, or in the cloud. Now, many of you who are Avid customers uh, have probably been with our storage solutions for quite a number of years. And you're probably well aware that we, we actually started our shared storage journey back in the sort of late 90s with, with what was named then Avid Unity. Now, over the years, we have completely substantially changed the storage architecture and storage deployments through the Avid uh, ISIS product families. And then the launch of Nexus in 2016, which is an entirely new architecture for storage uh, back then in 2016. That has evolved over the last few years to what we're talking about today. 
And in, in the journey along that way with Avid Nexus and the Avid Nexus file system, we've also launched uh, and are delivering cloud solutions. So not only you know full cloud deployments, but also SaaS offerings as well. So what are we focused on in today's presentation? Well, the, the launch of Avid Nexus um, occurred a couple of weeks ago, back on uh, July the 12th. And um, we've been working on um, innovations around the storage solutions, you know, for the last 12 months or more. And these are really what we're looking at here are the kind of focus areas for, for Avid Nexus through 2022 and beyond. So looking at um, enhancing how we deploy solutions, giving our customers more choice in terms of how they purchase our storage solutions. Collaboration is critical, of course, you know, so we're continuously enhancing the collaboration experience. And of course, looking at connectivity, whether it's actually um, on premises, in the cloud, uh, or even remotely. So there's a lot of things going on here that we're going to touch on, you know, through the next few slides. Now, there are three key areas of um, development that we, that we have announced uh, recently. The new F series uh, and Avid Nexus Pro Plus uh, hardware solutions. Uh, this is entirely new hardware for Avid Nexus. So those of you who are current Avid Nexus users or maybe uh, unfamiliar with Avid Nexus, previously we had what we call the Avid Nexus E series and the Avid Nexus Pro. So we've actually evolved the hardware onto a new generation of you know, physical hardware uh, engines. And we'll, we'll talk about those in a little more detail. Then as Dave um, alluded to the virtual file system. Well, you're gonna see Avid put in a lot more attention and focus around the file system because the, the brain and the heart of, of Nexus actually is the file system. It's not the hardware. And historically, when we've, when we've sold uh, storage solutions, We've integrated software and hardware together and sold it as a, as a complete um, integrated solution. And the file system hasn't really had its own identity. But with Nexus and the Nexus virtual file system, all the intelligence of Nexus actually is in software in the file system. And it's important, I think, going forwards that uh, our customers can see and identify where the value of Avid Nexus is in terms of functionality and features that will continue to add to Nexus going forwards. This virtual file system is also very portable. It allows us to have not only on-premise uh, solutions, but also what we mentioned earlier was the uh, Avid um, Edit On Demand, which is the SaaS solution, and uh, Avid in the cloud using the Nexus file system with uh, today with Microsoft Azure Storage. And then on the right-hand side, we're going to talk about the Avid Nexus Flexus, Flex software subscription. So this is entirely new for Nexus and for Avid and Avid storage. We've never had a subscription solution before. So let's uh, get uh, into the, the hardware, just give you a brief overview of what's changed in the hardware. So the F series is entirely new hardware. Uh, it might look from this picture, it looks very similar to today's E series and, and the pro system, but actually the, the engines themselves are internally re-architectured and we have entirely new storage controllers, which are significantly faster uh, than the previous versions. So this is all kind of state-of-the-art stuff. Um, with this um, move to the new hardware, we've also got the, uh, or achieved the, the uh, performance increase of the uh, storage media pack. So inside the engines, we have one or more media packs. Uh, we've increased the performance quite significantly from uh, E-series to F-series. We have faster connectivity for the networking now. So previously, um, all the Nexus engines were uh, 10 gigabit connected, or if you had what we call the, the Nexus E5 and the SSD engine, um, they would have been 40 gigabit connected, but we were actually supporting higher performance connectivity now with both the, um, the, the F5 series and also with the what we call the F2 series, which we, we will look at in some detail. So, um, we've also enhanced a lot of things inside the file system itself to uh, accommodate and support the, the new subscription and licensing services that we need for uh, having Nexus Flex. So you might be asking yourselves, well, why call it F-Series? Well, first of all, this is an evolution. It isn't a revolution. Um, we wanted to kind of um, make the transition to the new F-Series hardware um, easier to understand and easier for customers to understand that it's actually fully compatible F-Series fully compatible with E-Series systems. 
So yes, we get some in um, some speed enhancements, we get some connectivity enhancements and a number of other things with moving to the new hardware. But we want to kind of reassure all our Nexus customers today that F series hardware is fully compatible with their current systems. Now, I'm not going to spend too much time on this slide, but basically it's just showing the different naming conventions between what we have with uh, the current uh, Nexus E series and Nexus Pro. In the center is the new Nexus naming. Um, so we have Avid Nexus Flex, which is a new subscription offering, the virtual file system, the system director appliance, the SDA becomes what we call an SDA plus. And I'll explain what the differences are between the new version of the SDA and the previous version. Uh, we will have a new SSD engine later in the year. Um, I've highlighted this Avid Nexus F2 and this new F2X expansion unit. We will talk about that in a bit more detail. But customers who have the Avid Nexus E4 today, that was a four rec unit engine. Um, um, our hardware providers don't have a replacement for the E4. So we've actually combined the F2 and the expansion engine, the F2X, to actually deliver the same capabilities as the current E4. And they can actually be um, uh, mixed together as well. The new F5, new F5 Nearline, and the Pro Plus. So we're going to go through all these in a little bit more detail in the next slides. So at a very high level, uh, this is showing the family for Avid Nexus. In the center here, you'll see that the Nexus Pro Plus, this is the replacement for what we call the current Nexus Pro. The plus is really just indicating that it's an incremental improvement here. What we've got is entirely new hardware. It's a faster media pack. But one of the things that we've done with the Nexus Pro is increase the number of files that we can support. Um, currently today, the Nexus Pro is 3 million files. The Pro Plus will be will be about 5 million files. The F2, this is a replacement for the current E2 engine. It looks very similar to a rec unit engine with one media pack inside. Uh, can scale out to up to 64 F2 engines in, in one Nexus system. So again, over 10 petabytes of storage. Then we can combine the F2 and the expansion engine, the F2X, to make this uh, replacement for the uh, E4 engine. Then we have the F5, which is a very highly dense, high performance engine. Um, if you're not familiar with that, it actually has eight media packs inside. It's got two pull out drawers of storage. So um, there's over one petabyte of storage in one single F5 engine and um, almost four gigabytes of performance there. And then the Nearline system, which is um, really there for deep density for a library or a Nearline uh, or archive kind of configuration. And then on the bottom left hand side, we have the system director uh, appliance SDA plus. We have a new version of the SDA, the SDA plus, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but there are some big enhancements to the SDA. And then at the very, very top, I, I didn't skip that. Um, I just wanted to touch on the F2 SSD. There will be a new SSD engine uh, later this year. So, we're going to very quickly run through a quick dive into some of the hardware configurations. It, it could be that we have a, a number of customers on the call who are very familiar with E-series and Pro systems today. I want to know the differences between um, the new F-series and the, the previous E-series e and, and, and Pro systems. So entirely new hardware. So these are new engines internally. We're using entirely new storage controllers. These are based on uh, AMD Epic processors. And um, if you look at the F2 engine, which is on the right-hand side, you can compare it with the E2 engine on the left-hand side. And then we look at the differences. So you, you, you're gonna see, so in the next few slides, these, these kind of just comparisons between the E series and the F series. So the F series, again, entirely new hardware, new generation storage controllers. The new storage controllers will allow us to support both 10 and 25 gigabit ethernet connections to an external switch. The media pack performance for the F2 engines have been um, increased uh, in performance by uh, 20%, so quite a substantial increase there. And we can expand the F2 engine with this new um, expansion engine called the F2X. And when we combine them together, it actually replaces the E4 engine. We're using the latest generation disk drives. Uh, you see that we're using six, 10 or 14 terabyte disks 
So they're, they're actually the same capacities as the ones that we support today. So that will give us a 60 terabyte, 100 terabyte, or 140 terabyte media pack per F2 engine. But the most important takeaway point uh, on this slide is right at the very bottom. The F2 is compatible with E-series engines. What we, what we mean by this is if our customers have an E-series system today, you can expand or grow or add on to that E-series system using the new F-series uh, hardware engines. This is just a slightly different view. And the reason I showed this one is that when we look at the back of the controllers here, you see that we're highlighting um, that these controllers have uh, dual uh, SAS ports, so serial attached SCSI ports. And these are used for interconnection to the expansion engine. So we can expand the F2 with the F2X and they're linked through these uh, SAS ports. But you can also see in the bottom right hand side, the, uh, the, the controller image there is showing that the ethernet ports and there are two ports per controller. These can be configured either as 10 or 25 gigabit uh, ethernet. This is the expansion engine, the F2X. And if you look at the right hand image, you'll see uh, if you're familiar with the storage controllers that these actually are not storage controllers. These are actually SAS expanders. So uh, there are no CPUs inside these expanders. They're literally just IO ports or IO modules. And they link to the F2 engine to provide us with this expansion capability for the F2. Now, the F2X engine does host a media pack. So it has um, a 60 or 100 or 140 terabyte media pack in, in, inside this uh, expansion engine. And of course, you know we have this 20% increase in performance as well. Um, we can only add one expansion engine uh, per F2 engine. It's not like we're, you know, we can add multiple or stack up multiple expansion engines. It's just one expansion engine per F2. This just shows a, shows a slightly different view of the controller. It's a bit of more of a close up. You can see that these are just SAS ports. Um, again, these are hot swap components, just like the storage controllers in the F2 engine. So um, we actually provide uh, two SAS IMO modules with, with every expansion engine uh, as well. So uh, we do have redundancy between the control, uh, between the SAS IO modules, if, if that's a requirement. And each IO module will link to a controller on the, um, the F2 engine uh, above. The next diagram is a bit more detailed, but kind of might give you a little bit of a better view. So when we have the F2, and the F2X uh, stacked together, you can see that they, they're interlinked with these SAS cables. And if you look at the bottom right-hand image there, basically what we have here is we're just showing, if you remove the bezels, the front bezels off the engines, each of the engines here, or each of the, the F2 engine and the F2X um, unit, both have um, um, a single media pack inside them. But when you combine them together, um, the F2 engine has the mirrored SSDs for metadata and file system. And the, the F2X engine can host up to two hot spare media disks, just like the E4 uh, engine uh, provided. So um, customers who have, again, E4 systems today and they want to expand those uh, E4 uh, systems, they can simply add on a combination of the F2 and the F2X to expand out their uh, current E-series and E4 series systems. So what's the difference between the um, E4 engine and the F2 and the F2X when they're combined? Well, basically again, entirely new hardware, new storage controllers, the F combination of F2 and F2X deliver 20% performance improvement. Uh, the new F series engines, again, uh, support 25 and 10 gigabit connections. And again, the expansion engine, the F2X, is the one that has the I.O. modules in. And they're all using the latest generation uh, of disk technology. I've already covered this, but F2 and F2X is compatible with E4s, including mirror configuration. So if we do have customers who have a mirror system today, they can continue to expand that mirror configuration using the combination of the F2 and the F2X. This is a, a quick view of the new F5 engine. Um, those of you who might be familiar with the E5, you look at the F5 from the front panel, it looks exactly the same. But the F5 is actually new 
uh, hardware architecture, new storage controllers. Uh, it hosts up to eight media packs, four, four is a minimum configuration, then you can add media packs up to a maximum of eight. So um, the F5 engine is significantly faster than the E5 engine. So we're using 50 gigabit ethernet connections to connect the E5 to, I beg your pardon, the F5 to the external switch. But it could be 40, it could be 50 gigabit connected, but uh, we, we recommend 50 gigabit for the high performance. Um, again, F5 fully compatible with the E5. So customers have E5 systems today or E5 engines today, you can add the F5 to the uh, E5 configuration. The storage controller for the uh, the F5 engine, uh, again, it hosts, well, the F5 engine hosts two controllers for redundancy, but as you can see here, the uh, the ports for the, um, the F5 engine are either 40 or 50 gigabit connected. Nearline system is really designed for high density. It's, it's a, a nearline system, hence uh, NL. Uh, again, it will host up to uh, eight uh, media packs. Uh, again, when it's fully populated with media packs, there's, I think, I think it's about 1.2 petabytes of storage inside this engine, if, if I've got my math correct. Um, but this is a 10 gigabit connected system. It's not designed for high performance production editing. It's really a a kind of a nearline system as a library uh, for storing projects and media temporarily once you're um, doing other work on the online uh, production storage. But again, the, the F5 NL, fully compatible with the E5 NL. So if you have an, L, uh, an NL uh, E-series system today, you can easily add on the F5 engine and expand. So I mentioned briefly earlier, the system director appliance or the SDA. So we have a new version called the SDA Plus, and we intentionally didn't give this a new name because the we didn't cause we didn't want to cause any confusion with renaming the products radically. So we're trying to kind of maintain a, a naming convention which is consistent with what we are already similarly using with the E series and the Pro. Now the F the SDA uh, Plus system. Um, those of you who are not familiar with it, if you pull the front best lock, it only has two mirrored SSDs in there for the file system and metadata. It doesn't hold a, uh, any media drives at all. And this is really the metadata server. So if you're looking for um, high scalability, you're looking for a mirror capability, um, you're looking for higher redundancy, then the SDA Plus is, is really the, the device that you would need to add to your, uh, your current engines uh, or the new F-Series engines. Now, one of the things that we're going to add to the SDA Plus, uh, and this is in, in an upcoming software release, is the ability to support 160 million files. <clears throat> Excuse me. The current version of the SDA will support uh, 30 million files. And, you know, in all the systems that we've deployed so far, we haven't really seen a, a significant need to really increase the file count. But there, there have been a number of um, customer inquiries in, in the last few months where they want to um, add a significant number of VFX machines to the Nexus system, and therefore the file count needs to be able to accommodate those large uh, user connections and file counts. So we're going to offer uh, the capability in the SDA Plus to support up to 160 million files in a software release uh, that's coming up soon. Again, the SDA can be 10 or 25 gigabit connected, and the SDA Plus is fully compatible with current E-series systems. So for example, if, if you have a small E-series configuration day, today and you want to expand that with F-series engines, uh, you might require uh, a system director appliance and the SDA Plus is fully compatible with that mixed E-series and, uh, and F-series uh, hardware combination. And finally, just touching on the Pro Plus, what's the big difference between Nexus Pro that we have today and the new Nexus Pro Plus? Well, they're both 40 terabyte capacity engines and they can both expand up to four engines. Now, the Pro Plus is, again, entirely new hardware, new storage controller. Uh, and There is only one controller in the Pro Plus uh, and the Pro. But the media pack inside the Pro Plus has a performance increase of around 20 percent so about 480 megabytes per second and we do have this high performance storage group capability which will give us an even higher uh, performance for that media pack 
but for a smaller number of user connections. Now, one of the big things that we're adding to the Pro Plus is the ability to support more files. So up to 5 million files, uh, which will be delivered in a software release that's coming up soon. Um, and this is actually, the Pro has been a really successful product. It's designed for smaller configurations, up to 24 concurrent connected users. Uh, we've deployed it in a whole range of different kinds of workflows, both for video and audio applications. And um, now with a new higher file count, I think the, the, the Pro Plus will, will give us an even greater kind of uh, reach into maybe even the audio market where file count is, is quite important. Um, nice thing about the Pro Plus is that you can add that to the Pro uh, engines as well. So if you have a Pro uh, Nexus Pro system today, or maybe you know one or more Nexus Pro engines, you can add the Pro Plus to the Pro system and stack out or expand that Pro system with the Pro Plus. So I just want to take a moment just to show a comparison of how we can mix E series and F series together in the same system. So. In this picture here, what I'm showing here is, is uh, a system director appliance to today's SDA or the new SDA plus. And the SDA, SDA plus is connected to an E4 and an E2 engine. Now I can expand this system by just adding F2 engines, or I can add a combination of the F2 and the F2X uh, expansion engine. I can even add the F5 or the F5 NL or it could even still be the E5 and E5 NL. So this is really just showing that actually we can mix E series and F series engines in the same configuration. Okay, so customers who have already significant investment in the Nexus E series systems can be comfortable, they can, they can expand using the F series hardware going forwards. And this is also true for the uh, mirror configuration. Um, if you have a, a mirror configuration, uh, the minimum configuration is three engines of the same type. And what I'm showing here is a couple of E4s uh, with the F2 and F2X combination in a full mirrored configuration. And finally, uh, just more us wrapping up on the, on the uh, sort of hardware side of things, <clears throat> we have quite a unique set of capabilities inside Avid Nexus. So we believe we're offering one of the most um, collaborative shared storage solutions available in the market um, that can scale to hundreds of users if that's a requirement. Um, we have patented technology inside the file system. So um, this avoids any kind of congestion or and if we have multiple systems all hitting Nexus at the same time, and we need to prioritize who has access to media um, who needs it first, for example, if you have multiple users uh, hitting the same media file. So we orchestrate and manage through this thing called media due times, which is a, a unique capability in the Nexus file system, which is Avid patented. We also have this flexible media protection and our customers that are using Nexus today know that each workspace in Nexus can have a different level of protection. So we can have uh, a workspace which is OneDrive protected, uh, workspace which is two drive protected we can also have mirror protected workspaces and they can all coexist in the same system at the same time so the choice of media protections is entirely down to the customer depending on the value of the material uh, that they're using in the workspace um, many of our customers continue to use nexus because it has a great reputation for its reliability how robust it is uh, but also, you know, in terms of its ability to scale to meet what your needs are, but also you can add uh, high availability features whenever you uh, you may need them as as your business actually expands and grows. So scaling as well is not just about um, you know um, scaling or, or increasing engines or file size. It's about the number of connected users. So. Um, uh, Nexus has been fully tested to support over 300 users concurrently connected, and we do have a number of systems around the world that do actually support 300 plus users. And the way that we actually deliver this capability is, um, and certainly through um, the importance of every time we come out with a software update or even new hardware, we go through this process in a thing called a scale lab in, a new, in the USA, which is really um, it's, it's a multi-million dollar scale test lab. It has over 300 clients 
which are permanently uh, connected to the largest Nexus system that we've ever shipped. And so this allows us to do all the software testing and the, re, you know, the, the um, certification testing that we need so that we release that version of software uh, to those customers who have these big systems. We know that we've tested it and they can just install the software and they shouldn't hit any issues at all. So one of the differentiators for Avid, uh, it's not just about the file system for Nexus. It's not just about the, you know, the the reliability, you know, media due times and things like that is really what we invest continuously in the ongoing support and um, qualification of hardware and software uh, within our test labs. And finally, I just wanted to touch on the virtual file system. Dave mentioned at the very beginning that we have uh, quite significantly changed the file system in the current release of Nexus. Uh, it was actually 2022.5 uh, released. Um, what we're showing here, really, these are just some of the capabilities of the file system and for Avid Nexus. And we want to continue to um, develop the Nexus uh, VFS, the file system, going forwards, add new capabilities, even new things that we haven't even, um, we, we, you know, we sort of recognize when we look at this kind of uh, virtualized capability, the file system has to have completely new attributes for different engagements or different deployment models, whether it's SaaS or whether it's cloud or whether it's even on-premise. So the file system you're gonna see uh, from Avid, you continue to see us um, putting more and more um, focus on the file system and the file systems capabilities going forward. So just to sum up, um, the new F-Series uh, and Pro Plus hardware will support 10, 25, gigabit ethernet or 50 if it's the F5 range. Um, we're introducing the Flex software subscription, which Eddie's going to talk about in a moment. Um, we're working to um, continue to evolve and develop out new capabilities inside our cloud uh, deployments. And we actually in, in the more recent release of the uh, Nexus uh, software, the 2022.5, we're now supporting uh, Mac uh, Monterey, Windows 11, and we have this new remote client capability as well. So this is just a continuation of things that we've been working on for some time. But of course, the whole F-Series and Flex is, is really what we're talking about here today. So last slide from me is just to sum up. So it's an entirely new generation of hardware. Um, the new F-Series is fully compatible with the E-Series systems that our customers have today. Pro and Pro Plus, again, fully compatible today, uh, can, can actually easily integrate together. So we've increased scalability, we've increased performance, and we've enhanced the uh, connectivity of the uh, systems. And we've made some very significant enhancements to the virtual file system, and you will see much more coming uh, going forwards. And now I'm gonna hand over to Ed, who's gonna talk um, a little bit about Flex subscription. Thank you very much, Kevin. Good afternoon, everybody. I grab the slide thing. No, it's not. Um, yep. All right. Yeah, I'm going to take a couple of minutes to build on what Kevin has been uh, mentioning to talk about the Flex subscription. So this is really evolving the the commercial model of Nexus, and it it is an option. Some th some people think we're just going to a sub fully subscription model. Uh, not true at this time. You know, it is um, there is still an option to buy it as an integrated solution, but the Flex subscription um, delivers an alternative to the capex model. And what we mean by capex, you know, the capital expenditure, just that one big time purchase every five or six years is the traditional way of buying storage. Um, people really want a different way to do it than that. They want to be able to spread that payment out over time. So the Flex subscription model certainly delivers that. It also augments the on-premises solution and complements the cloud solutions. You know, we've had Nexus in the cloud for three, going on four years, probably. Those have always been subscription models, which, you know, fits very well with the cloud, as people would be uh, not surprised. And one of the big benefits is it actually enables that transition from on-premises to the cloud. So certainly some of our customers as, you know, see that they're going to be adopting more and more cloud solutions over the years. You know, 
but maybe they're not quite ready yet. So they're looking that, you know, in a couple of years, you know, kind of transition to the cloud, the Flex subscription allows you to do that and actually allows you to transition uh, the on-prem software subscription and move it to the cloud, you know, whenever you're ready. So to get into a little bit more detail, the Flex subscription is uh, an annual subscription to the VFS software, so the software that Te Kevin was talking about. So now that can be deployed on premises or it can be deployed in the cloud. And as I said, sort of a transition of both and a hybrid model. So it allows that migration to move to the cloud whenever you're ready. So the, the on-prem version does require the Nexus hardware, indeed the, the F-series hardware that Kevin's been talking about. Um, <clears throat> you know, some people say, well, you know, are we now able to use Nexus software on other hardware? No, because one of the biggest benefits of Nexus is the performance and to be able to guarantee that performance and really characterize the performance and, you know, things that Kevin was mentioning, like the Scalar Lab, you know, where we have, you know, 10 petabytes of storage, 300 clients, you know, to get to that level of performance assurance, we wouldn't be able to do that on the hardware. So the combination of that Flex software subscription, a one-time hardware purchase at, you know, a, a price that puts that all together is, you know, the essence of the Flex subscription. The Flex subscriptions always have uh, the highest level of uh, AVID support. So elite support is always included with the Flex subscription. <clears throat> So you know that you've got the highest level of support, you know, bundled right in there. So some of the business benefits of why a subscription is, is a good thing. So it is increasing the business flexibility. You know, it, it allows you guys to be able to, and indeed even sort of try different business models or um, try different deployment models, whether that be on-prem hybrid, you know, or the full cloud deployment. It is a, an investment protection, as I mentioned earlier, you know, that ongoing software subscription can either be used on-prem or moved into the cloud, the BYOC, the bring your own cloud. So a lot of our customers, and certainly some of the larger customers today, but um, is it available to anyone is, you know, what we mean by bring your own cloud is, you have the subscription for the Azure um, cloud storage, and we can deploy Nexus within that. So that can be a very customized workflow. The other alternative is Avid Edit, edit On Demand, which is a full SaaS solution, the full turnkey edit in the cloud solution. So either of those. Um, subscription uh, allows an easier upgrade and um, you always get access to all the latest and greatest software fe features, which is a you know an important plus. And as I mentioned, it gives you that um, increased business flexibility. And the final bullet here is because you're not having to put down that huge amount of capital every five or six years, you can re potentially redeploy some of that capital to do other things while paying incrementally for the Nexus as you go along. So it's kind of take some of the big peaks out of that spending um, curve, which is a good thing. And then a few more benefits, um, you know, in some organizations, you know, certainly that is an easier thing to process. It's an easier approval. And actually once it gets set up, the, you know, the, the software subscription is gonna renew each year. Um, it does make it a simpler business model and it actually makes the Nexus more affordable on the entry at the entry point, the first years, you know, are incrementally less than buying the whole thing and paying, you know, well, paying that one time thing for the, you know, the whole six years. So it allows, um, you know, you as the customers to be more dynamic. And I think I mentioned before, customers on subscription will always have access to the latest and greatest features, you know, which is important as we add, um, you know, capabilities and nexus as we go along. So the three main deployment models we have <clears throat> is that OPEX, you know, operational expense. So the recurring kind of payment model. So for on-premises, you know, this is the new part that we've never had before. 
um, Avid Edit On Demand is that full software as a service editing in the cloud solution that's been available for um, a year or two already. Um, you know, that's virtual media composers in the cloud, Nexus in the cloud, acceleration software to be able to get your media in and out um, is very much underpinned by Nexus as the storage layer. And then the bring your own cloud for the, the larger scale, more customized deployments. And the Nexus software li license will, will be able to move between those different uh, deployment models. And if it advances, there we go. And so in summary, oh, it's a build. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Wait, where's my little, sorry, the little clicker on the remote. So it's a, um, it is a, um, an, a, an alternative to the traditional CapEx for on-prem. Um, so it gives you the flex subscription on-premises, you know, so it's not just a subscription, you know, Nexus in the cloud, so we can do subscription in either place. Uh, as I mentioned, the flex subscription allows you to do that migration to the bring your own cloud, to be able to do the cloud deployment, and also have it on, uh, on demand as the full cloud solution. They're all the alternatives that we have. So that's, those were the slides. So that hopefully that gives you an idea of what we've been doing. You know, the Nexus F series was certainly a, you know, a great evolution, a lot more bandwidth and a lot more flexibility as Kevin mentioned, um, you know, adding features into the VFS software as we go. We've been doing that for a lot of years and certainly raised the bar a lot this time. And, you know, the flex subscription as a new commercial model, <clears throat> hopefully that's all all good stuff. Um, we just look and see if we've got any questions. I answered uh, as well. So sorry, uh, Kevin again. Uh, we only had one question that I could see. I don't know if others have been answered, but um, it was uh, about Montre support for the M1 and M2, uh, M1 and M2 um, processes. processes. Yep. Processes. yep. yep. Did that yeah, yeah. I, I answered a few as you were going along. So oh, good one. Sorry. <laughs> When I'm presenting, I actually don't see the questions coming in. Yep. So um, that's the sort of end of the presentation for Nexus. Um, and we, we kind of want to open it up to see if there's any questions from the um, from any participant, anybody that wants to uh, ask anything of, of Ed particularly, because he is the storage manager, uh, storage product manager for, um, for Nexus. And, um, you know, this is your opportunity to, to give to answer directly questions to Ed. So we'll just pause for a second and just see if anybody has any questions for him. Oh, so one point I didn't make that I meant to is just in case anybody's wondering, this is all available now. Um, as Kevin mentioned, the, the actual main marketing launch was on July 12th, but we have inventory, we've been shipping. We actually sneaked out a few early units in June uh, you, we didn't want to do the release right at the end of the quarter. So, you know, this is available now. And the one of the biggest takeaways is, you know, that compatibility. So if you've got Nexus today, you can add on with the, the F series. You know, there's no sort of worrying of, oh, do I need the, uh, you know, how do I add or how do I expand? So that full compatibility between the two series, I think, is the most important piece. Uh, go on here. I'm not an expert in this area. Media composers mentioned in this. Is this compatible with Pro Tools? Yes, very much. I think Kevin mentioned it one time. Yes, we do a lot of testing uh, for Pro Tools and Media Composer. And some of the pieces, I think the reference was, you know, we're increasing the file count uh, in a software release later in the year. And that certainly um, plays well with Pro Tools because the Pro Tools sessions tend to have a lot of uh, smaller files. So yes, we certainly support Pro Tools running on uh, Avid Nexus. What is the question here about what is the subscription? So uh, I, I think maybe if, if I'm reading this correctly, it's like, you know, is a subscription software and hardware, for example? So, or is it just for the file system? So maybe you can expand on that a little bit. Okay. Yep. So there's Subscription, you know, I mean, at the very highest level, subscription, you know, if you subscribe to some software service, um, you know, you get access to that service. 
uh, while you're paying. So the subscription is you get access to the Nexus file system while that subscription is active. The, the benefit being, you know, as I mentioned, it spreads the payment out over time. It reduces that first upfront cost. Um, you know, doing Nexus on a subscription is, you know, sort of like buying a car on a subscription, which some car vendors have been trying to do. You know, it's it's certainly different than just a software only thing because we have the hardware. So that's why we, um, for a number of different reasons, we split it that you, you actually buy the hardware. It's less, that per hardware purchase is a lower price than Nexus used to be, but it is hardware only. It won't do anything. You need the software subscription to light up all the functionality that we talked about and all those benefits that Kevin mentioned. So those two are joined together. You, you have the hardware that you own, you have the software that's an annual subscription to light up that functionality to have the access into the system. So hopefully that clarifies it, um, but certainly contact your Avid representative or your Avid reseller if you need more clarification or we can um, you know, we can clarify it after the fact. I just answered a question about network switches. Um, the new uh, documentation is up on the Avid Knowledge Center. So for the whole uh, F series uh, and E series actually, but there's a new switch guide and there's uh, new documentation for, um, for the whole new range of products, but they also include the E series information as well. Oh, so there's a question here saying, does the F series affect the end of lit, end of, well, I'm thinking you mean the end of sale of the E series. So we are transitioning pretty quickly. Basically we have inventory of the F series. Um, we do not have a lot of inventory. We have a little bit of inventory of the E series, um, but the main, you know, this, this, this sort of points back to that compatibility thing. The F series are, is a hundred percent compatible with the E series. So, we figured, you know, everybody wants the, the new shiny thing. Um, but, you know, I mean, seriously, people want to buy the, the latest generation. People want to buy the, the best thing. We do have a performance increase. So there will be an official announcement of the end of sale of the current Nexus that will be supported uh, for at least five years. Uh, we're actually looking to do that slightly longer. But so any Nexus that you have, you know, purchased recently is fully supported for five years. You know, generally, that doesn't mean that one that was bought back in 2016. And yes, we started shipping in 2016. Don't try to use a Nexus for 10 years. The, the hard drives weren't designed to run that long. Um, you know, you should look to cycle them out er, er, after five or six years. But um, certainly the compatibility is there. Um, if you purchase the hardware and subscription... Oh, yes, yeah. so there's a question here about if you've been doing the subscription on premises, a transition, if the software subscription gets transitioned to the cloud, what do I do with the hardware? So there is actually two answers. One, and the, the person asking the question said, could I run a third party, you know, generic file system on that hardware? Absolutely, yes. So you can just repurpose it. Actually, there's the best way to say it is you can repurpose that for whatever, you know, sort of typically more like a near line uh, thing, but yes, the hardware is, you know, doesn't become a, the impolite way to say this, it doesn't become a brick, it is certainly useful. And that investment's uh, protected as well. Uh, there's one here, it says, will the, oh, will a feature difference be, with the average con there's a question um, regarding um, software releases and functionality. We are looking that in the future, there will be some features that will only be delivered in the subscription model. We're not quite at that point, but sort of directionally, we do see a point that um, some of the new newer features would be released within the subscription model. Um, we do, have we didn't really touch it on it on it here there is a a mechanism we can transfer an existing e-series to subscription so that if customers need access to those features or indeed they want to build a system and add to it with the f-series and subscription we can transition the existing engines 
to a subscription as well. So there there are options. We you know we're not in the game of you know locking people into a sort of painting people into a corner. Um, the question there from Colin. Um, Hi, Colin, from South Africa. If one requires a redundant controller for an E-series, I assume an, uh, it actually says both E-series. So if, if not right, I think he's saying does yeah does the controller have to match the engine type? And yes, they do because as Kevin mentioned, the the underlying architecture is different enough that we can't you know cannot mix the controller types in an engine. Um, so if you need redundant, if you're looking at putting in redundant controls in your E-series, that's a, a thing you ought to do now. Um, typically, we don't see them added later on in life. But um, yeah, so the if you've got an E-series engine, it needs E-series controllers. And similarly, F-series needs F-series controllers. Yep. Uh, let's just we did that one. Just trying to catch up and see. I, right. I think that's the end of the question, well, yeah. Red, I believe. Uh, we'll just yeah. maybe just leave it a few moments just to see if there's any other questions come in. Um, but for everybody on the call, I mean, uh, if you do have any additional questions about what we've talked about today or even anything to do with Nexus Storage, you can reach out to Ed or myself uh, through email. So we're contactable and we can answer those questions. Uh, on a one-on-one -on -one with you. So, uh, you know, don't hesitate to contact us if you need some, uh, or you have some additional questions. So oh, this one just popped in. Um, <sighs> you want to take that or something? So the questions, so the question is something like, and I may, may be reading too fast, but it's saying, why is the, Prices the same or higher, you know, once you've gone to subscription. Well, they're actually the first few years are much less because you don't pay the whole thing up front. So you know, over time, you're paying, you know, a similar price to the integrated solution, but certainly up front it is a, a it is a lower entry price. And you know, we we didn't show the you know the the specific pricing. It gets too confusing in this kind of format, but you know. Talk to your avid uh, channel partner or avid, you know, salespeople directly, and we can, you know, make get you a quote. We can show you the differences or what the the options are. I, I think this question Ed, raises a, a point that we might need to touch on, <clears throat> especially around, um, you know, what happens at the end of a subscription. If a subscription is not renewed, can the customer still get access to their media? Yep. So. Right. So if you have the subscription and the um, and you choose to not renew, the system largely becomes inoperable, but you absolutely have access to your media. And what I mean by that is, you know, you could have a, you know, if you've got a system with an SDA, you could have 100 clients or even if you've got 20 or 30 clients. Once the subscription expires, you, you will retain two connections into the Nexus. That is for read-only kind of access. So you can absolutely get at your media. You can copy that media out. Um, so yeah, we don't want to lock in your media. Obviously, we need to restrict the amount of clients because if we didn't do that, it would run exactly the same as it did before. And then it's not quite a subscription. Um, but yeah, yeah, be assured you will be able to get access to your media even if the, um, the subscription expires. Thanks, Ed. Um, I th think that looks like probably the last question uh, that we have. So I think at this point, I think we'll probably wrap up this session. And uh, thank you to, to Dave and thank you to Ed. And thank you very much for those of you who have joined today for the presentation. We really appreciate your time today. Uh, and of course, if you have any questions, uh, please contact your local Avid reseller or your uh, Avid directly through um, you know, our AVID team, or if necessary, Ed and I directly, if that's a requirement too. So thank you very much for all attending today. Very much appreciate your time and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.